Hi. All right. So a bunch of people took photos of the Sturgeon Moon last night, early August 2023, and uh, they were disappointed in what they took. They, they would share these photos of big white blobs and say, oh, you should have seen it. <laughs> it should have been there. Can't quite capture it. Well, I want to talk about how you can take better photos of the moon today, all right? And I'm going to explain a concept, a core concept to photography that will really help you if you, if you apply it, if you learn it and apply it. Uh, it's going to revolutionize the way you take photos, all right? So this thing, the exposure triangle, I was taught around 2015, 2016, and it totally changed everything. It made everything so much easier. And it doesn't matter whether you're taking photos with something like this, with a lot of manual controls on it, or a you know, a mirror, a uh, less camera like this with a beautiful Canon F 1.4 50 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Love this lens attached to it or your camera. This is a Samsung with like six different lenses that I never use. Uh, but the essence of it is the same. Okay. On the phone, what you're going to have to do is get an app and uh, hopefully you've got a phone where the aperture can be manually controlled, changed with that app. And the shutter speed certainly will be able to be changed, okay? And so that is at least a, a major element that you have control over, okay? Uh, to make your exposure better. So what we're talking about here in, in exposure, the word means how much light am I letting in to the sensor, okay? And there's, we've got this lens, right? And this is the same for your phone too, okay? We've got this lens where light's coming in through this hood. It's hitting the aperture. That's the hole in the front, okay? And that hole can be wide or it can be very small, right? How much light am I letting in? And then it goes past the shutter. And the shutter is the thing like Chris Rock talked about years and years ago, especially he was talking about Sammy Davis Jr., right? Blind musician. Can't we just get Sammy a peek? <laughs> right? That's the shutter speed. <laughs> okay? Is it open for a while or is it... <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that impacts how much light is hitting the sensor. Okay, so those are the two main things that you have control over. And if you've got the app on your phone, hopefully you've got control over those. Uh, at the very worst, you're going to have control over shutter speed. Okay, the third element is ISO, and we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to tell you about it, and then I want you to forget about it. Okay, it's a variable about kind of the graininess or number of dots. This is not resolution. Um, that, that apply on your sensor though and um, so th this is very useful when you've got extremely low light conditions and something about the aperture or the shutter speed just aren't working for you like say I'm taking photos of birds at night and they're flying right I need a fast shutter speed 1 1250th of a second or faster probably to take a good picture of that bird flying at night <laughs> okay not a lot of light is able to hit that sensor Right? And so I could have the aperture open real wide, but it's 1030 at night and it's dark. And so I've got my wide aperture. The hole's big, but uh -huh, right? And so the only element I've got there, my last resort is I can crank up the ISO. The ISO will be 100 or 200 as a default on your camera or phone. Okay. And don't change it <laughs> unless you're in this situation and you can crank it up to 3200 or something like that and it would allow more light to hit the sensor essentially okay and that's one way of brightening things up but what we're talking about today is the moon and the moon is effing bright right it's hugely bright it is like the brightest thing in the night sky especially when it's full and this is a problem okay so here you are with your phone right trying to take a picture of the night sky now I don't know if you know this but the moon is small the moon is always small in the night sky yes to our human eyes it looks big when it comes up over the horizon and it's cool look I got a three mile drop on the highway from where I live from Asheville to my town okay three mile drop like that switchbacks down the continental divide and man when I come down that thing and the full moon's coming up I'm like holy crap that looks awesome right and I've been at Carolina Beach many times here's a picture from 2017 I took after learning the exposure triangle I consider this a mediocre photo but at least it's reasonably exposed right we can see the thing there are a lot of photographers there with me it was about a 20 minute period where we could capture this thing coming up. It was massive. It was golden. It was a color you don't normally see, etc., etc. Right? But 
The fact of the matter is this is an optical illusion to our human eyes. And so to the phone, <laughs> right? We got big sky. Take an aspirin tablet, hold it out in front of you to the moon next time. Any phase, full moon, it's fine. The aspirin tablet will cover the moon wherever it is, on the horizon, up there, over there, okay? It's small. Our eyes will lie to us, our brains will lie to us and tell us it's big at the horizon, but this is not the case, okay? So, what that means is, your phone is going, let me take the exposure, the light balance, correct white balance, light level, for all this. It doesn't know you're interested in this little tiny moon, okay? It's gathering and exposing the light for the correct setting for all this. And what is all this? Mostly dark. It's nighttime, right? So it applies too high a setting for the amount of light coming through here. It lets too much light in, and that exposes the moon as the big blob, okay? And you go, dang, damn it, my phone's no good. No, the settings are bad. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because you haven't used the exposure triangle and you got to get into some manual settings here. Okay, so we talked about ISO. You're not going to use it. Leave it. It's the change of last resort and only for certain circumstances. But aperture, the hole at the front of the lens. Okay, when I change the hole size and I shrink it down. Okay, which is this larger number on here f8 f11 f16 okay i'm letting less light in down the barrel of the lens okay that's good because the moon is freaking bright and i know that that's the topic or the subject that i want to take a picture of the phone doesn't know that right and so i'll i'll adjust my aperture for that and see what happens i also know that a faster shutter speed uh -huh, right will allow less light to hit the sensor so i could dispense with all that i could go into aperture priority as i have here and that will work the same anywhere right go into aperture priority make my aperture f11 f16 something like that let a small uh, amount of light through that hole and then let the computer figure out the shutter speed and see what happens. This is a hobby of patience and persistence, okay? And learning the syntax of your, your equipment. What buttons do I press? How do I do this? What order in which do I give it commands to get the results that I want? But this isn't hard, right? We're just adjusting a couple of settings, okay? Aperture and shutter speed. So aperture, again, the whole size. The larger the number, the smaller the size, okay? This thing f1.4 is its maximum aperture right that's very very wide okay so this thing is great for low light conditions right we're not interested in low light conditions when the moon the full moon is our subject where maximum amount of light is bouncing off of that thing and and coming back to us and to hit the sensor on our camera okay so we don't care about a large aperture size we want that thing stopped down all right now <clears throat> as far as sharpness goes, there is a trade-off, okay? It usually starts off as kind of soft, not very good resolution at the f1 point whatever, 2 point something, even 4 point something that you would normally find on a telephoto lens. It gets sharper and sharper as we go up to f8, f11, and then it comes down again as we go towards f16, f22, f30 something. <laughs> you know, you're never going to play up there probably, right? f32 or something like that, but just so you know okay your sharpest images are going to be around f8 f11 this is the moon it is very very bright and so we have to take that into account so we're going to stop down our our aperture to the bigger number and we're going to reduce our shutter speed to the the larger number below the fraction okay 1 60th of a second is slow one 1250th of a second is <laughs> okay that's the really fast one that's more what we want okay so the biggest thing you can do is i guess change the aperture if you can't do that change the shutter speed if you could change both great and just experiment with these and see what the results are you get right if it's too bright change something stop the aperture down even more if it's you know if it's too bright make that shutter speed even faster <laughs> you know and 
<laughs> get less light onto the sensor. Don't touch the ISO. Leave it. Okay. You can you can only go brighter with ISO. You can't go darker. So once once you're at ISO 100 or 200, whatever the max is, okay, at that at the end of that setting. All right. So these are the three pieces of the exposure triangle. Okay, the three corners: aperture size, shutter speed, and ISO. And you don't need to worry about ISO. Okay. So to sum up, we're letting light come down the barrel through the aperture, which we're going to stop down, make smaller, to the shutter, which we're going to make its speed very fast, right? Open shut, right? To let as little light as possible to hit this sensor so that the image is correctly exposed. And we are going to focus on the moon, which this thing doesn't know how to do, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't know. It's trying to take in the whole night sky, remember, and expose for that instead of this one subject on it. All right. <sighs> so I've tried to put in some photos here that I've taken. Um, some are with a, a bridge camera. Some are with manual long uh, legacy lenses. Um, good photography does not have to be expensive, okay? I buy pretty cheap gear. Um, but I know how to use it, and I practice with it, and I suck for a while. I accept the fact that I'm going to suck for a while, and then suddenly I take very interesting images, all right? And so the same thing for you. Expect to take 20 photos to get one good one, all right? Don't expect to go click and, and get the perfect exposure on the first try. You're going to have to mess with it a little bit and adjust that aperture and shutter speed and stuff like that to get one. But... So you take 10 or 12 photos and you get one good one and you post it and your friends and family go, ooh, how did you do that? And you're like, haha, I know about the exposure triangle. <laughs> Jason taught me. All right. So go out there, practice. Um, and, and honestly, some of the best times to take pictures of the moon are when it's half or a quarter full. Um, not necessarily because like full, it can look like a dinner plate, you know. And, uh, and I don't love it as much as some of these sort of alien egg <laughs> images, right, that I've taken when it's in a uh, partial phase. So anyway, I hope this was helpful to you. Please leave a like, a comment, um, share it if you felt that it was valuable to you. Uh, if there's something I missed, let me know. Oh, before I go, that reminds me. I've shot this video like six times, okay? Um, there's a thing here called the white balance button, okay? And that'll be on... That'll be on every camera and probably on your phone and that it'll be a setting on the, the touch screen back in here. Okay. White balance usually goes from plus three to minus three. And that's a computerized way of um, putting more light or taking light out of the, the image. So you might want to crank that white balance down to minus two or minus three if the image is way too bright still, even with the aperture stopped down and the shutter speed really fast, okay? That's yet another option that you have. And I wanted to make sure, because uh, I kind of forgot about it earlier thinking through this video. But anyway, I think, like I said, this is the, the sixth or seventh time I've tried shooting this video, and I think I got it right this time. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.